Hi, I'm Peter from Coffee Parts, and no, I haven't gotten shorter. This machine is just a beast. Today, we've got the Mazda Rover S here. We're gonna dive in and have a look at it now. The new Mazda Rover S. Now, this grinder started its life as a Mazda Rover, the original one which came out in the year 2000. And since then, it really worked on updating and, and really fixing up each area of the grinder. As other grinders caught up and improved, Mazda felt a little bit behind and they've come out with this weapon now, basically. We're gonna go through and look at everything they've done, all the features, all the little intricate details of it. We're gonna talk about it and later on in this video, we're gonna jump in and actually use the grinder dial it in, adjust the settings, look at the portafilter support, look at why they did things. So let's get started. One of the first things Mazda did was look at the retention that they had. So when you're grinding coffee, there's a certain amount of coffee that sits around the chamber of the blades. In this case, they're a conical 73 mil blade. So you had a bit of a chamber around and between that chamber and the funnel, there was coffee that sat there. The more the coffee, the effectively, the more pre-ground, so to speak, coffee you had between shots or not as fresh. So Mazda completely looked at the flow between the, the hopper, the blades, and coming out the chute, and actually have redesigned it and improved it by 52%. So they brought down the, the retention by 52%, which is actually quite a big number. In doing that, what that means is, if you're using the grinder ad hoc and doing, to say a coffee now and not doing a coffee for half an hour or something, you could just purge or dump a little bit of coffee and then your next shot would be completely fresh but it also helps in cleaning it. At the end of the day, when you wanna shut off that hopper, run out the coffee that's in the neck of the grinder, there's less coffee in there. This makes the cleaning and the usability a lot better. The next thing Mazda looked at was the static or the buildup of static in the coffee that was basically in the chamber there, grabbing the coffee and making it clump and the static that was in the funnel. They've actually done the grinder flow control system. So that sits just under here, behind here, and it's effectively in the channel, it's got three springs. It's got one spring, but the machine comes with three springs. So it comes with a hybrid spring, it comes with an anti-clump spring and an anti-dust spring. Depending on what results you're looking for, you can take off the finger guard, remove the spring, and put in the spring you want. So they actually come in a little pack like this, and inside this pack, if we can get it open, inside the pack, you've got the three spring options. From factory, it comes with a hybrid one installed, but you could just replace it with either the anti-clump or anti-dust. So they've worked on reducing the retention and the anti-static. The next thing they worked on was the ability to remove your collar and basically change the blades or clean inside the grinder without losing your grind adjustment. So in the past, it was on a thread, you'd remove it, put it back in, it was a fair bit of work and you'd lose your settings, so you'd have to then dial in the grind and use a fair bit of coffee. Now with this down to four screws, you remove that, the whole top comes out and you can clean it, access it, change the blades, put it back in and you're back where you started. Very simple and you save a lot of coffee in the process. Mazda have also been inspired by some of the other grinders in the market in which they've now got a memory track system. So your collar's actually split here and there's a screw that locks in the top part of the hot collar to the bottom part of the collar. So when you adjust the collar and move it, the two pieces move together. But once you've got your setting, if you then want to recalibrate or bring that numeric dial back to zero, you can loosen the screw, bring the zero back to the initial starting point, lock it down again, and now your movements are based from that reset position. Makes it a lot easier to dial in and calibrate from where you left off. And it's simple, but it's actually really effective in real life. From a safety perspective, Mazda have also put in a micro switch behind the hopper. So when you lift the hopper out, the grinder shuts down, effectively no hopper and you won't be able to use the grinder. This is to avoid anyone being able to put their hands down the neck of the grinder and we don't even want to talk about what would happen if you put your hands in there, it won't be great. But this switch makes it all steady. So with the micro switch here and the finger guard there, there's basically no ability for you to do anything stupid and hurt yourself. One other area that they've looked at is also the porta filter support. Now, this is probably one of the nicer brackets we've seen on a grinder in that 
not only does it work with standard porter filters, it works with porter filters that have, to say, a support, like the new Lama Zorko porter filters, or porter filters that are a bit wide, a bit tall, etc. There's an adjustment here, you can adjust the height, and the actual neck here is quite wide, allowing for multiple different spouts to come in. So when your porter filter is in there, it locks in quite neatly and level. So with this, this currently we have for this porter filter, but had we had a Lama Zorko porter filter with the support, we would just have to lift the lugs up slightly and we'll be perfect and fine to go. And the micro switch actually sits behind there. So on this grind, you can activate it based on this micro switch or on the keypad. We'll get into that a little later in the video. Mazda have also looked at the heat of the machine. The heat being the lower you can keep your machine in temperature wise, the better it is for the aroma of the coffee. So they've done this by reducing the RPMs of the motor to 450 RPMs, or actually very slightly, depending if you're running it at 50 or 60 Hertz, but around the 450 mark RPM. And it's a die cast aluminum body in two parts. This was first seen in their early Kony versions and now has been brought into the Roba SE. And that helps keep the cooling lower. They've also thrown in two fans, so one at the rear, one at the side. Overall, it's keeping the grinds a lot cooler and it's helping the coffee retain its aroma and body and freshness combined with the anti-static and the lower retention in the chamber. All together, it's becoming a lot nicer unit. Another simple thing that they've done is if you actually look on the hopper, they've actually sealed the top of the hopper, not only here, but down the bottom. And this is to lock in the freshness of the coffee when most lids kind of sit at the top, vibrate, Many cafes don't even put the lid on, they just leave the bag straight on top. What they've been trying to do is lock in the freshness of the coffee and try to get that coffee to oxidize less in the process. Another little feature Mazda have done is actually integrated three time buttons. So you've got your single, double and triple shot. Previously only had your single and double. And not only have they done three buttons, but you can run them off the keypad or off the micro switch and you, there has a pause feature which allows you to collapse the coffee, basically to settle it down. So if you are overdosing, you can fit more coffee in with less mess. And that pause feature you can run as a percentage of time or as a manual stop feature. So you could be grinding, hit the pause, collapse it down, keep going, or you can say that every time it's 70%, you want it to pause and it'll pause automatically for you. Awesome, awesome, awesome feature, and one that avoids when you used to see in cafes a pile of coffee down here on the tray. From a body perspective too, the machine is super neat. You've got your stainless tray, you've got your aluminium on off switch, which is just so solid compared to the old plastic one, and beautifully finished machine. Everything on the machine just feels solid, feels like class. It really is a really refined product. A common question we get asked is, what does the grinder come with? Obviously the grinder and the hopper, but what other items does it come with? And in this case, the Rover comes with the ground tray, a porter filter support, which is pretty obvious. You place your porter filter on to keep those spouts off the bench. A tamper, which I feel like is quite generic and one that I wouldn't be using. I'd probably get a real tamper and just use this as a paperweight, gift, I don't know, anything but its actual function. Uh, grind the brush to clean the inside of the funnels here especially at the end of the day between service and some spare parts. So two spare lugs here, they're actually just a little bit taller in case you have a really tall porter filter. A replacement micro switch nut and your grinder flow control spring. So the hybrid one comes installed and it comes with the anti-clump or anti-dust as spare and they're replaceable so you can buy them further down the line. One thing to note is when you are cleaning this grinder, not to poke or put brushes into the grinder, grinder flow control system because you will damage them. That's all the exciting part. That's all the dot points, so to speak. I think what you guys are really interested in is the usability, how to use it, how to clean it, how to dial it in, what does a menu look like, how to adjust a porter filter, and that's what we're going to be covering now. The Maserova S. Now let's get into it. We've just filled the hopper with some beans and what I wanted to go is just overall explain the machine a little bit and we'll just get in deeper and deeper at each stage. So when you got coffee in the hopper, you can see the, the keypad and the display here are all activated. If you were to remove the hopper, which we just have to undo the safety screw, once the hopper is out, the paddle here has been removed so the micro switch has been deactivated 
and the machine's cut off, basically to save you from putting your hand in there or getting hurt. While we have the hopper off, if you were to loosen this, you can then adjust the, you can adjust the If you were to loosen this, you can adjust the a little bit easier. And now, once you do dial it in, you can loosen these two screws here, which will basically loosen the top part of the collar to be able to reset it back to zero. So you've got a reference where you're starting from. I just thought I'd take the opportunity of the hopper being off to show you that. Let's get the hopper back on and keep going. Also with the hopper, what it has is a seal here and that seal keeps it quite, obviously there's still oxygen in there and there's no one way valve letting it out, but it just keeps it fresher than it used to before. So let's lock this back in. We'll, we'll lock the hopper in, but we'll leave the, the grind unlocked. Now, looking at the display and the keypad, come on, I'll show you something. We've got three settings, so for single, double, and triple dose. Now, in the older generation, they only had singles and doubles, and the third dose really makes sense because you could run the, the one as a, basically a bit of a purge or a single if you're running. A double and triple, normally with takeaway cups, a lot of people are running bigger, you know, 20 to 24 gram baskets, so it makes a lot of sense to separate the triple from the double. Now, on the keypad, we can run it basically either on the touchpad or on the micro switch. Currently we have it set up to the micro switch to run all in one go. If we were to go into the menu, which is quite simple, into grind settings, go in, we can adjust not only the dosing time, but the grinding pause. So if we were to go into dosing time, we would set the, the dosing time for one dose and set up the time. So just say, call it three seconds or two and a half seconds. Bear in mind, this grinder does five grams per second, so it is quite a fast grinder. If you were to put two and a half seconds, it's now set. Going back, you can actually run the time multiplier. So if you wanted, that would basically go two and a half seconds, five and seven and a half seconds. Or what we prefer is to go into each individual one and set up your time individually. So just say, call this one four seconds. Once we get up there. Four seconds, which is now set. Going back, we can also go, if we just go back, we can go into the grinding pause and work out for each dose whether we have a pause or not. So on dose one, we can activate the pause at a percentage of the dose, or we can run a manual activation. So that means that when you either hit the micro switch or the keypad, depending on how you have it set, where it pauses, we'll run it on the manual activation. So we'll enable it now, as now enabled as you can see. So going back out, we've now got the first one with a manual pause enabled. If we were to go into the working mode, this is where we can select whether we're using the keyboard or the porter filter. The porter filter being the micro switch here or the keyboard. Let's move it back to keyboard. We currently have it as porter filter. So now we're confirming as confirmed on keyboard. So effectively now we've got, we've set up the one cup for two and a half seconds. We've changed it to the keyboard and we've done a manual pause. So what does that look like? if we were to go back out. So if we now were in, it's locked in, it's holding the porter filter and single, we could pause it, collapse down our coffee and keep going. Now, we are gonna be, we've also got the pause at 70% of the way through from earlier, which I forgot to remove. So that would then, it paused automatically. So with the porter filter, it has two screws here and these lugs. So these porter filters, actually are just your standard porter filter. So you, with the, these stubby screwdrivers are your best friend with this grinder, not only for the adjustment here, for your finger guard under here, if you ever need to remove it to get into the um, clump spring, or for adjusting these. Now, if you did have the Lama Zorka porter filter, it comes with a taller version, basically to compensate for the support the Lama Zorka porter filter has. But adjust, these were already pre-adjusted, so we're gonna leave it. But the point is, a stubby screwdriver will really help you out. So basically, once it's locked in, you want it locked in simply, you want the, the porter filter nice and flat, and you want to dial in your time, whether you want to pause it or not, and work out whether you want to use the keypad or the micro switch. Now that we've got that all covered, so hopper, hopper, um, safety switch, the lock for the adjustment, the two screws to adjust to recalibrate the zero position, 
the finger guard, the spring, the menus, the porter filter. Now that we know all this, we can actually go into and actually grind our first coffee and start dialing it in. So if we were to open the hopper chute, we've now got coffee in the funnel. Let's see what it's gonna look like. We haven't adjusted this grinder, so we're just gonna go with whatever comes out. So if we hit a single, and it's stopping at 70% of the way through to collapse, and we can keep going through. Now, as this was a first time run, not all the coffee's gone through, it's still filling up the chamber. It's gonna take a few coffees to go through. This is a brand new grinder. So if we just run it a few more times, we should start getting the whole machine calibrated. So even for the first grind setup, it's a little bit coarse, but it's quite neat off the bat. But that's just luck of the draw, to be honest. So we know we're gonna want a little bit more time, but we just might grind a few more just to make sure everything's starting to fill out. That's 70% of the way through and full. So we've set that two and a half grams. We're actually running a double basket. So realistically, let's go in and set up the double to make it more correct. I've got the scales here, but we're not gonna be weighing in and out just yet. Let's just get it roughly close. And I do feel like we need to go a bit finer, so I might as well just do that now, as it might take a shot to go through. You, you do have some retention in there, so it's nice to purge it through. So we're gonna probably need a little bit more coffee than that. Let's get into that menu. Let's go into the grind setting, go into dosing time, into number two, and let's just go up from four to five seconds. And lock that in. And we're running it straight through with no collapse. Let's lock that in. Let's get out of the menu. And let's go. So there you have it. it. We're gonna now weigh in and see, to get the timing right and the adjustment, we really need to start using scales. We're aiming for 20 grams, so we're just gonna tar this porter filter. Now we're using an Akaya scale. You really could be using anything. Another common one will be a Time or a Harrier, but for now we're using the Akaya Pearl. Knock it in, run our double shot. and see what it comes out at. So it's coming out at 24 grams, which is probably a little bit much. So we can go into that menu, into the grind setting again, dosing time. We'll go into two dose, and we'll probably bring it down to low four second mark. So let's go 4.2. And I'm also gonna go in and go back and put in a grinding pause. And we'll do the grinding pause on activation pause. We'll enable that just to allow us to pause and collapse it halfway through. One more time. We're going to go in. It's going to pause, collapse it a little bit, and run the rest out. And now let's see where that's at 20.4. So we're getting really close. Next thing you do, you put it onto your espresso machine, watch those shots and really dial it in. You know, just eyeballing it, we are quite close, so I feel like it would be very, very close. But the only real way to now do it is with your espresso machine. But all I wanted to do was really show you how simple it is to get it in, adjust, what all the adjustments were. If it was the end of the day now in the cafe, you'd want to be cleaning the machine. And a simple way to clean it is to close off your hopper so the beans are now not going into the chamber and to run out any coffee that's left in the neck. So you're probably going to be running a few, probably two coffees to get it all ground out. We'll just do a quick single and that's it. It's now ground out everything that was left in the neck and the burrs. We'll just do another quick single. So now the only coffee left is a small amount around the chamber and out the chute. So if you were to look under here, the only amount of coffee is a small bit of coffee in that chute. 
The best way to clean that, you don't want to be probing anything in there and ruining that spring. The best way is to remove the hopper and to get a plunger and just basically force air through it and all the coffee will come out. So at the end of the day, you would remove the hopper now. The machine's going to naturally cut off, so it'll be nice and safe. Once you remove it, you'd get a plunger, plunge the air through, so you're going to throw any bit of coffee out. I would get this coffee put in the container store overnight, something like an airscape or vacuum bin or frizz, just to basically store it so it's not oxidizing overnight and leave the machine clean. You can clean the hopper, maybe running a bit of steam into it or some water just with a rag and clean it all out. And the machine's nice and clean. It also comes with a grinder brush that you can open in here. I've actually got the brush this over here and you can just clean any bit of loose coffee that's in there and it's just ready fresh for the next day. The, the, the tray comes out and you can clean that out quite easily too. And that's it for basically starting it up, putting in coffee, dialing it in and adjusting. Now you can get carried away and you can connect this to the Maz. It's got an app that you can download and because this machine's got Wi-Fi and IoT, you can go into your app and further calibrate to look at analytics of how many copies you've done, etc. Right now you can see it's showing the date and time, pretty simple. I'm not sure you're ever really going to look at that with your watch or iPhone or whatever you've got around, but it's just that that marries up with the data that's coming out and it is quite nice to know over here on the screen what time each button is set at and just a quick glimpse of how many copies it's done. So in this case 59 and it's just an overview so you know that today you did 200 or 300 or 400 coffees in your cafe. Gives you perspective of what's happening. And that's it for the Mazza. Quite simple, simple to use, simple to clean, and just very, very, very solid unit. So I'm actually really happy with this unit. I'd like to know what your feedback is, what your thoughts are, and whether you have one. Or if you don't have one, what do you have? Do you have an Anthem SP2? Do you have a Malconic? Just let us know. Thank you, I'm Pedro from Coffee Parts. On a side note, we are gonna be comparing this machine to others, to so say the Anthem SP2, the Mythos 1, Mythos 2, the Malconic E65S, etc. So if you wanna watch that comparison video, which we're gonna be filming shortly, just jump in and subscribe. You'll be notified as the videos come out and you'll always be up to date. And while you're at it, leave us in the comments, what grinder are you running? What grinder do you wanna be running? We're interested in knowing what people out there are using so that we can tailor the videos to you guys. Once again, I'm Pedro from Coffee Parts. Thank you for watching. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.